I, I open the same project of last lecture here and this. Last time we stopped speaking about a list. Just a, a brief recap. Lists are data store to store multiple items in sequence. In a list you can put uh, strings, number, string and numbers, whatever you want. Every list is indexed by a number, so the first element in a list is the index number zero, the second element is index number one, and so on. Dictionary instead are a data type to store multiple items, like list, but these um, data type, these elements are not in a sequence, but there are a couple of elements. The first one is a key, and the second one is the value that is associated to that key. They are not ordered. So this, is, this happened to be in this representation, the second element, but you cannot take by, by granted that this is always and always will be the second element of the dictionary. This is an element of the dictionary that has key Germany. The other one is another element of the dictionary that has key Italy. It's not the first and the second element. It's the element with key Italy and the element with key Germany. And we start, yes, the, the keys are immutable. You cannot change the keys once created. And the value, instead, you can change the value whenever you want. And then we... So all of this, and uh, we saw that you can print a list, print a single element in a list, uh, modify a list, uh, replacing uh, an element, or append something to a list, a single element, like in this case, where we append in the end of the list the, the element chocolate, or you can also extend a list with more than one element in the end of the list flour and cheese, for example. Or also in this way, you can extend a list. And uh, with this operator that is called a uh, concatenation. And last time we stopped here, basically. So this time, right now, let's continue from list. So today, let's see another operator that works with list, but also works with strings. That is the slice operator. The slice operator, we have a list here that is this fruit with three, with some elements. Let's redefine that. Here, with three elements. And the slice operator allow you to select some of these elements in sequence in this way. For example, if I want to print only the second and the third element of the list, I can use this slide operator uh, with the name of the, the list, fruits, the starting index, that is uh, two, and the final index, that is three. I think one tree. Okay, so you see here, the last line, that this slice operator selected the second and the third element of the list. I put here one because is the, this index, second index, and the third is not present, so it's the end of the list. Same things happen if I wrote just one column without anything. It will print everything from index one up to the end of the list in this case. Again, oranges and pears. Here. And the slice operator obviously works also without a starting index. This is uh, useful for, for example, deleting a sequence of element. So I don't want to delete the first 
and the, the second and the third element separately, but uh, in this case, I can, in one operation, select multiple elements at once. So this is the slice operator, and it also works with string, particularly, I can use the slice operator, for example, to um, also remember, also uh, to perform a copy of a list. So for example, if I write this through its uh, colon in square parentheses, I will perform a copy of the fruits list in a new list that is called remember. And as I said before, this also works with list where the index element are the charter of the string. Then, if you want to, if we want to delete an element in a list, uh, some of you probably already discovered this in the lab, we have uh, two methods. The first one is pop, fruits.pop, that removes the last element of the list. By default, the last element. Pops can go also with a number, like for example, uh, one, that in this case removes the element with index number one. So in this case, it removes oranges. So pop without element removes the last element of the list and return the element that is removed with an index, it just removes that index, the element of that index. So pop of zero, it removes the first, the apples element of the list, pop of one, oranges, and so on. If you don't want to work with indexes, but you want to work with the content of the list, there is an operate, a method in, uh, in Python that is um, remove. Remove, delete an element from a list, not by index, but by content. So, for example, fruits.remove uh, apples removes the element that is apples, no matter where is the element in the list. It could be in the first position, in the third position, in the 1000th position, no matter. It looks for that element and it remove it. So for example, let's try to remove this apple here. Yes, and maybe we can print the list. And you see that the last line is again oranges and pear, but this is the full list right now. Like instead of this, these other lines, the first line that you appear here is the print of the slicing, the sliced list. So element number one and two of the list. Instead of removes, just remove the element from a list. Another method to remove a sequence of uh, elements from a list is the del uh, keyword. You can write del fruits of, for example, one tree. One two in this case. It removes all the element with the slice operator. So if we have a much longer list, we can also write something like one, 100. It removes all the element in that interval, from one up to 100. This del keyword and the pop method also works for dictionaries. With the pop method with a slightly different difference. Then, since we can imagine that in a certain sense, a list uh, is a sequence of element and a string is a sequence of charter, it's always possible to convert a string 
in a list uh, with the, uh, we already saw the int function, the string function, there is a function that is called list that allow you to convert a string in a list where each charter is an element of that list. So for example, if I create the, the language name variable and I call it Python, then I can say um, print list of language name. In this way, it will convert the list in a, uh, the string in a list where each element of the list is a charter. So this operation brings this list where each charter is an element of the list. Similarly, you can also have something more clever than this because this is quite probably useless for 90% of the time. You can, for example, split a sentence according to a space, a comma, or something like that with the split method. So for example, if we have a sentence that is a string with some spaces, um, this is a sentence, you can um, create a list that's called words in which you have every single word of that sentence as an element of the list. So sentence.split will split the list, the, the sentence in every space. So if we print here words, you will see that for each time it, it finds a space, it will put the word in a separate element, removing the space. The splits method can also work with custom separator uh, by explicitly saying to the method hmm, that the separator is not anymore a space, but for example, a comma or a semicolon or whatever you want. And this basically close most of the this string yes. is split every character in an element of a list. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, we don't have, like last time, we don't have charter as a type, but it's always a string, a string or one element that happens to be the English equivalent of a charter. Yes, absolutely, it's a string. Um, now, I have also a question for you, probably. Let's speak of copying list. So let me write this um, simple program. I create a list like before with two elements again. And uh, for example, and then I would like to say Okay, this is a generic list of fruits. It contains two elements, but it could contain 1,000 elements, as you want. And then I would like to have a second list that has only my favorite fruit. Not every fruit in the world, just my, a subset that is my favorite fruit. So, I create a favorite fruits variable, and I said it is equal to fruits, and then I, for example, add a new fruit to the, the first list, that is the fruits list. 
And so if I write something through it's dot uh, append uh, um, strawberry. And then I would like to print something really simple. So uh, the fruits are uh, fruits, and my favorite fruits are something simple. I mean, nothing really strange. What happens here if we run this program? Yeah, I mean, okay, but, sorry. What will print here? We'll print the fruits are a colon and then a square bracket and we'll print probably apples, oranges and strawberry, right? And the second time? Wheat or without strawberry? Who say wheat? Who say without? Without. And all the other? Don't care. So let's check. And then I would like to ask uh, who say wheat, why? But uh, run copy list. So right, it prints the same um, list two times as some of you said, but the question now is why? Are you able to explain in a simple word? Normally, because you give the favorite fruits the same address of fruits. No? Simple, in a simple way? <laughs> it does not copy the list, but that is a simple way <laughs> to say what it, probably you said. It doesn't copy. This operation is not a copy operation. I would like to stress this, emphasize this, especially for uh, who say without or we uh, who didn't didn't say anything? This is not a copy. This is in that moment, fruits and favorite fruits are the same thing from that moment on. So if I change the first one, I will change the second one and vice versa. So let's try to visualize this because this is a simple case, but it could be. Uh, useful also for for other types. This is a website that uh, we didn't create. It is called the Python Tutor that allow you to uh, visualize your code. It support Python basically because it's named Python Tutor, but also support other languages like C, Java, and so on. It has a great support for Python, some degree of support from the other languages. So you can here write code in Python 3, Python 2, Java 8, C, C++, JavaScript, and so on. So I paste here the same program as before, just to visualize what happens. And I can say visualize execution. So here we have my code over there. And here, if I go step by step, I see what happens. So in the first line, fruits equal apples, it creates a variable that is fruits and an object that is a list with two elements, index zero and index one. Then when I create a fruits list, it will link point to the same list, to the same object on your computer. So when we go on, it will add strawberry to the, the only, the really on, the only list that you have. And then it prints 
the results over here and so this is why you don't have a difference because there are two variables that point to the same structure in reality so what we can do if we want to copy for real one one things i already say one method before that is the slice operator the slice operator perform a copy of the list when is without index the starting the end index so if we run this you see that the first list has strawberry and the second one it doesn't and this is one option that sliced slice the other option is to use the list function that we saw before for converting a string in a list this obviously does not convert a list in a list but as a result it will give you a new list because it's a list and then you say please create a new list from this so if it's a string it take a string and convert a string in a list if it's a list it create a new string with same a new list with the same, the same content so also this operation create a, uh, a new list and the third one is uh, this is among the three methods that I will show you this is probably the best one to, to do to create a new list because it's a, an explicit creation of the list because you see that you are creating, you are copying a list. And, and the third method to create the list is to um, extend a list. So favorite fruits dot extend fruits. Yes, and I have to create favorite list. Fruits. So I create a new list that is empty and then I take the, the full list and copy the list, extend the empty list with a, an existing list. So of the three methods, the, you, should, you could prefer the second one, the one with list. They are equivalent in the result. So let's, you are not expecting what happens, but let's try to, to see here. So if I wrote list and press visualize and forward. So I added the list. So first step, same as before, apples and oranges with a pointer from fruits to that um, structure. Then when I create the second variable, what happens? It creates also a copy of this structure. So you have two, in this moment, two copy of the same structure, but they are different things. So if I, I add strawberry in the first one, I obviously only add the element in the first one, not in the second one, because the second one is a separate copy of that list. And then, and so on. If I print everything, it will print correctly everything. So notice this as a reminder. Okay, so back here and now we can speak about dictionaries. So again, a dictionary is a data type to store multiple elements in a couple that is composed by a key and the value, the key is immutable, the value can be changed. So to print a dictionary, the, the basic way to print a dictionary is just to say print the name of the dictionary. So we can create a dictionary that is called leg, legs, and we can put here, maybe I already have this, yeah, this one. 
a dictionary that is called Lex that has, um, let's say, two values, two couple of values. The first is that the ant has six legs, where ant is the key and six and this is the value, and snake, another animal, has uh, zero legs, where zero is uh, uh, the value and snake is the key. So if we can print this, we can cycle, we can print this with a loop in this way. We already saw this last time, but we can also print a dictionary in this way, like we saw last time. So just print legs and we will see if we run the right program, we will see that it just print the dictionary and six and snake zero. So since I said before that we can, we cannot change the key, but we can change the value, we can obviously um, say something like of uh, ants and equal another number, but since I don't want to say that uh, an ant has more than six um, legs, I can create, for example, a spider uh, key and say that the, the spider has, for example, 273 um, legs. For example. And if I print this, uh, I saw that uh, in the dictionary now you have the third element that is spider with 273 legs. And if you see a spider like this run very fast, but uh, uh, it's just <laughs> to, to show you how to change this. And uh, but you can, in this way, insert an element in a list, in a dictionary, just to specify the key in square brackets and a number, a value, after the equal. And then, as I said before, here you should basically run. And so we can fix this in this way, spider equal eight, that is better um, for, um, for a spider. And if we run this, you see that the dictionary now has spider with eight legs. So we fix the spider. And so in this way you can or create a new key and a value or just edit one existing key with a new value. You can obviously also remove a key. As I said before, you can do it with a del uh, keyword. So del legs of spider. It will remove the key from the dictionary. And also you can do um, legs dot pop um, spider. It will remove the key and the value associated with spider and this pop method will also give you back the value of the element that is removed. So if you perform this operation you just remove spider from the element from the dictionary this pop method give you back a number that is in this case eight, that is the value of the element to be removed. You can also empty a dictionary with the legs.clear method. It will empty the dictionary at all. So now let me comment this because I need a dictionary with some elements. And let's say that I want to 
for example, print just the value of the key ant. So I can write print legs of ant in, in, in a square bracket. If I run this, I will, it will print uh, six. Let's try. Yes. So here, if you say print legs of ant, it will print six. If I, for example, delete the spider. If I delete a spider, and I would like to print the value of spider, because maybe the dictionary has 1,000 elements, and 1,000 couple of elements, and I don't really know what is in the dictionary. I can check, but I'm lazy, and I just want to print a spider, no matter if it's there or not. Uh, I can, for example, do this, print legs of spider, and And you see here in this wrong probably uh, error that it say basically that in line 70, this one, print like spider, uh, I have a key error that is spider because it, it is right because in, the, in our version of the dictionary, a key named spider does not exist. So we try to get uh, to find a key that is called spider and to get the, 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 the associated value and it was not able to do this and it, it, would, it will give you an error that is a key error because the key is not present in the dictionary. So we can uh, obviously check before printing the dictionary, the, um, the spider with the if uh, spider uh, in uh, um, legs In this way, if spider is in legs, I can print spider, otherwise I will not. Or there is, let me say, a more elegant way that is use the get method for dictionaries that say, okay, get that string. So if we try get of ant, it will print six. If we try get of spider, it will not give you an error, but it will print none. Because there is no key in the dictionary that are that is called spider. So the default answer of this get spider is none. Uh, po uh, good things of this get method is that you can personalize this response. By default is none, but you can say, for example, that the response should be not present. Or whatever you want. And if you run this, you see that it will give you not present or whatever you want instead of none. So this could be a good way to get a value from a dictionary, even if the value is not present in the dictionary, in just one line. Obviously, if we if I write here ant, it will print six, because a key is present and the value associated to this key is six. Okay, so this closed the list plus dictionary uh, our topic. And we need to open another file because we speak about functions. We already used a lot of function, list could be considered a function, print is a function, uh, get is a function, let me say, 
it's similar to a function and so on. But you can also obviously create a function for your code. Uh, for example, in the last uh, in the exercise number three of the last lab, uh, you could have used a function for each uh, item of the menu that you need to print, for example. So how to, how to define a function in Python? The function starts with the def keyword, then there is a name of the function, a colon, like every other um, element, uh, keywords, if, while, it, the line ends with a colon, and then there are a space, an indentation of typically four spaces, and you have the body of the function. So for example, you can say def, uh, say hello, as a function, colon, new line, indentation, and we can say print, uh, hello. Then you just remove the indentation and then you can write your program. For example, you can call that function here. So here you define a function, a very simple function, that just print one word and then you call it and then you call it the same function without indentation. So the function stop here because it re we, you, we remove the indentation before writing this, in writing this. So if we run this, we just say that it works and it prints hello. So the first uh, two lines are the definition of the function and the other is the call of that function that you already just defined. So function can also have obviously parameter and parameter as in many other languages can be inserted in the parentheses. So for example, we would like to print hello, a name of a person to, to say hello. So name, we can use uh, a variable here, a parameter, name, and then in the print, we can just say hello, comma, name. And here we need to edit our call and pass something to that function, for example, hello, MEI students. If we run this, as expected, it will print, hello, MEI students. So we define a parameter, we use the parameter in the, in the body of the function, and then we pass this parameter um, to the function during the call. A function can also have a default parameter that you can indicate in this way, a parameter equal something, in this case, MEI. A default parameter a default parameter works cover the case in which the call of your function is not parameter. So if you run this, it will print hello MEI because you pass no parameter and the default parameter is MEI. as expected, hello, MEI. If instead we can pass um, a parameter like before and we run this, it will not use obviously the default parameter but the value that you pass during the call of that function. You can obviously also return something from that function. So have a function that performs some operation and just not print on screen things, but also return the, the result of this operation on the main body of the main uh, program. So for example, with the return keyword. So for example, we can say, we can define a different, uh, another function that is def uh, um, build. Let me create this before build greetings 
and with the same parameter as before, with a default parameter, and let's say that this return, like before, hello plus name. And here we can say that we can create a variable that is called greetings and we can call the function build greetings with, uh, for example, no parameter so that we can use the default parameter. So what happens here? Here we call this function, we go here, we don't have parameters, we use hemi as a default parameter, we build this string, hello, space, the name that in this case in, is MEI, and then this function will return a string that is composed by hello space MEI and put this string in this variable that is called greetings. If we print, just to, to see if it works, greetings, we should see um, that prints hello hemi again as expected it has the same behavior as before but now it is not the function that prints something but the function that create a new string and go back to the main body of the program or the script with the the new a string that is called hello that contains hello um, mei In Python, you can also return more than one things at a time. This is quite different from other um, programming language. And you can, for example, return with, by using a tuple, two, three, how many parameters as you want. in this way. Then here you don't have one variable only but you need two variables because you return two elements a string that is hello and another string that happens to be MEI. So here you have to declare two variables greetings and for example name person And here, then, you have to combine these strings. Like, for example, two, just to, to print something different. So if we run this, we, it prints hello to Hemi, and it, this operation is typically called unpacking. It take everything that returns here and unpack the all the return values in all the in the right number of variables that you declare before the equal. So it take the first hello and put it in greetings and take name, the content of name and put it in person. And then you can you have two variables so you can do whatever basically you want with these two variables that are strings in this moment. And again, and another thing about um, function is that you can, can, you can um, document function by using a, a doc string that is really similar to the multi-line comment that we saw last time. So you have a triple um, quote that opens and close. PyCharm also adds you some elements like param because this function has a parameter that is name and what returns because in, in needed it will return probably something, not in this case. And you can say that this is a a function for saying hello.
For example, a name is um, the name of the person to greet. For example, a return, we can delete return. And this documentation, this wait documenting function, can be done for every function just after the definition. Just after the first line of definition, you can write the documentation of that specific function, and that documentation is called the doc string in this way. This multi line comment is a doc string. So everything that I saw here, most of the examples are in the slides, maybe not in the same exact order, but they are in the slides. And then let's speak about modules. A module is a way to organize in a logical way code. A module is in reality a file that contains some Python code. So every file we created right now could be used as a module. These modules are Python files, so they can define function, implement function, create variable, create constants, and so on. And the file that contains a module by convention is called in the same exact way as the module. So for example, Python has a module that is called MAT that allow you to have basic uh, mathematical operation and variable like the pi variable. And that MAT modules is in a file that is called mat.py. So there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the file, the file name and the module most of the time. You can import a module in three ways in Python. One of these three ways is really, really bad, and you must not use it, but it exists. This three way has three important differences. The first way is this one. In the first line of your file, you can write, uh, import the name of the module, and then in your code, if you need something, a variable, a function, something that is defined in that module, you just have to say mat dot the variable of the function that you use. So right now, I told you that the mat module has a variable that is called pi, that represents the pi number, and in this way you use this variable that is still defined in the other module, in the module mat, in your code. So import the name of the module, and then you can use, not in this way, because this, this doesn't run in Python 3, because it misses parentheses. Uh, it will, in this case, it should print 3.14 and so on. But it uses, Notice this, it uses the pi variable that is defined in the math model. And this is one way to import a module, where the import line is always the first line of a file. The second way to import a model, or better, to import a portion of a model, is this one. From name of a module, import something whatever you want to import. So in this case, from the math model, we just import the pi variable. And then if we need to use the pi variable, we just have to write it without math.py, just pi. The difference between before and here, there are two differences. The first one is that in the first case, you have access to the entire module, not just to the pi variable. Here, instead, you have access to the, pi module, to the pi variable only. And the other difference is that 
you this way, the second way, is really, really similar to declaring, to copy the Pi variable from the math module into your program. So if you declare a variable that is called Pi here, it overrides the Pi variable, it overrides in your program, obviously, the Pi variable that, is, that you imported in math. So in this case, you just take the Pi variable and put it in your file. It's just not a reference to something that is declared in another, another way. It, it's more similar to a copy of that value of that variable in your own code. This could work in some cases, could be useful, especially for functions. And then there is the third, the third way that is the one that you should not use that is similar to the second one, that is from math, import everything. So you take all the content of math, variables, function, and you, let me say, copy them inside your program. So you can probably override most, some of the things that are declared in the math model in this way. So you in this way, risk to lose the capability of declaring your own function, because you don't know how many functions on or they are called in the math model. But if you need it, maybe you have override it in your code. So the preferred methods are the first two. The first one, if you need more than two or three elements from the, the module, and the second one, if you just need two or three elements, very, uh, very small number of elements, variables, function, and so on, from the module. You can obviously, so to, to create a module, to, to import a module, just type here, the first line, as I said before, import math. And then you can use everything in math. Then, we have command line parameters. I, I would like to finish 10, 15 minutes before, just in case you have any question about your project's idea. So I will go a little bit quick here. Uh, last two uh, topic about Python basic. The first one is command line parameter, and the second one is reading, writing from files. So command line parameters, you, uh, to call a parameter from the command lines also uh, in PyCharm, by the, in the, you can set up parameters here in the configurations. You have these interpreter options, here you can set here parameters, like from the command line, when you run the program. If you want to take that parameter from a user, for example, before launching the program, you have to uh, import argv from sys, where sys is the module and argv is the variable that you import from sys. And then you have to unpack all the things that are present in argv in a certain number of variable. For sure, you have the first, you have one variable that is script, that is the name of the program that you just run. So in our case, for example, when we run the function.py um, file, the name in script it will be function.py. And then if we have one or more parameter, you need one or more variables to host that parameter. So for example, if we have, um, if we launch our, uh, a program that is called myscript.py with a parameter that is one, we will have here in script myscript.py as a string, and as first, we will have one that is the first parameter that is here. And so if we run this program, 
it will print the script is called my script that is the program and then the parameter is one if we have more than one parameter we will need a uh, comma second common third common whatever you want variable to have space for every single parameter and this is common line parameter from sys import argv and argv there is everything you uh, use from the program from the program name and all is parameter that are subsequent and this is called uh, as before as I said before unpacking because from one in this case from one variable you get multiple variable then you can obviously write and read files in Python so for example we can from sys like before import argv and take the first just the first parameter the first real parameter from argv we can also do in this way we don't need uh, to to unpack everything if we just need the one of the parameter on the command line and put this parameter for example in a variable that we call file name and then the open function if we give to the open function the name of the parameter of the file to be open it will open that file and it will put here a reference of the entire content of the file in this txt variable so if we print here is your file file name it will print the name of the file uh, test.txt for example as a text of file if we want to read to print the content of the file uh, there is a, a method that is called read so txt.read will read all the file all the content of the file and print the entire content of the file on screen and this is for reading file yes this open the file and this show the content for writing file is similar you just have to use the open function not with just the name of the of the file but with a second parameter that is in this case w that is i would like to open that file in write mode i would like to write in that file in this case opening with y with, y, with the y with w um, parameter it allows you to write that file while here you cannot write the file the file is open only in read mode so you can for example write one line in the file with the write method so we take the reference from this open and put it in a variable that we call target and then target.write this is the new content it will replace the content of the file indexed by file name with this new line and then after writing a file we, we open the file we write something inside and then we need to close the file to say okay now everyone every else everyone else can do other type of operation in the file a read another write but this is not an operation that I'm performing I'm not working anymore on that file and in the end of this slide just a couple of reference so um, I will stop here and uh, um, so that if you have some question about your project your project idea second round first round final round whatever it is um, I'm here just ask the deadline for submitting the final version the final team composition is tomorrow by 11 and 59 in the night on Monday you will have one hour in the half of laboratory in Ladispe where you will try this second part of the um, of the Python basics and you will start from a slightly different version of the exercise number three of last time that is why 
we don't you don't have a solution of for those lab in um, online one thing then you can go um, just one last thing on github if you didn't didn't notice in the Python lab one repository, you now have a branch that is called the solution that hosts the solution of the previous lab. We will always have this paradigm. We will create a repository in the master branch. We will put the readme file, the PDF, any content to start, and then in a separate branch that we will call solution, we will put the solution of that specific lab. And this link is also in the website of the course, the website, the page of the course. Okay, so that's it. Have a good uh, night. I'm here for any question. <laughs>